Well everybody, Google Gemini Ultra is here officially. If you remember, this is the model that Google said would compete with GPT-4, which is the best model from OpenAI. And if you were to ask me, is the best large language model we've ever seen. Now, I've got a confession to make, guys, I'll be real. I've had access to Google's Gemini Ultra model for weeks now. I was one of their many beta testers. Legally, I could not tell you guys about it, but now that it's released, obviously we are going to be talking talking about it a bunch in today's video. I've spent some time with this model. Right off the bat, your first question is going to be, is this model any good? The answer is yes. It's a pretty good large language model for sure. But the deeper question we really got to explore, is it actually worth it to use this Google Gemini Ultra model over GPT-4, which we've had for quite some time now? My answer to that is maybe? Let's take a look at the pros and cons. First thing to note, Bard is just gone. Poof, disappeared. Bard is now Gemini, which makes a lot more sense. No offense if your name is actually Bard, but I think that for an AI product, Gemini just is a little bit more memorable. All the capabilities you know and love are still here and will keep getting better in the Gemini era. Okay, Google. And as you can see, things are a little bit different here. We now have Gemini Advanced and Regular Gemini. Regular Gemini is that Gemini Pro model that we already have had access to. It's nothing special, maybe a little bit better than GPT 3.5 at times, but it's nothing to write home about. Gemini Advanced, yes, this is one of the best large language models I've ever used to date, but does it really matter when GPT-4 has existed for so long and is accessible in ChatGPT Plus and the OpenAI API? Well, first of all, there are some inherent benefits from Gemini Advanced over something like ChatGPT Plus. For example, Google's Gemini Advanced is going to have, relatively speaking, better access to real-time web search information than ChatGPT Plus because it's using Google, it's not using Bing. So this is an older example, but I had asked it what the latest video that I had uploaded on my channel was and it was able to provide that specific video with ease. As you can see, ChatGPT doesn't really give you a satisfactory answer here, just giving you the link to the channel. It's also worth noting here though that Perplexity has the best AI search I've ever seen, where this thing can literally just pull up the latest videos and their thumbnails with direct links here on the side. So while it is better than GPT-4 and ChatGPT, it's not better better than the free perplexity, at least in my opinion. As usual, and has pretty much always been the case with Google Bard, and then of course Gemini Pro and Advanced, the creativity of these Google models is off the charts. It's very, very creative. Of course, with this does come the caveat of they will hallucinate a little bit more than the OpenAI models in my personal testing. Here's a gorgeous poem written by Google Gemini Advanced. We have perfect rhyming, and it's able to combine the seemingly unrelated ideas of ice cream sandwiches and the planet Saturn. I think it does a really great job in the creativity department, but it is just important to keep in mind that neither is GPT-4. I think if you had to compare them directly, Gemini is actually a little bit better in terms of creativity, but is it that much better that you should switch to Gemini Advanced? I'm not so sure. I do love the user interface for Gemini though. Modify response, shorter, longer, simpler, more casual, more professional. I mean, these quick options are just absolutely awesome. Give me a longer poem. Right off the bat, I can ask for that. Also, the speed at which Gemini generates is absolutely blazing fast. Google's APIs are rocket ships. And another really nice user interface feature that we get with Gemini here is that we always get three drafts with every single response. That's nice to have. And I can switch them here and directly compare them and pick the one that I like best. So you're just getting more results than you typically would with ChatGPT. That's honestly a pretty huge benefit that a lot of people sort of forget about with Google's Gemini. You're getting more bang for your buck in terms of actual LLM generation. Another nice user interface here is that you can actually listen to your bard prompts. It will speak them out for you. Great for people who are not sighted and just nice if you don't want to read text all day. Makes it a little bit easier on the eyes. Ice cream sandwich, a handheld delight, chocolate armor, vanilla so bright. 
yeah, you guys get the idea. Another great user interface benefit with Gemini is the Google double check response. Nice and handy for double checking information that an AI might spit out. And honestly, it's something that I want to see in all large language model interfaces. For example, tell me a very obscure fact about George Washington. He was a pioneer mule breeder, apparently. But how do we know the model isn't just hallucinating? Double check response, actually able to go pick out different pieces of the text and give us Google searches that relate to the fact at hand. It is really nice, and this is a feature that I just haven't seen anywhere else or as fully developed. Another feature with Gemini is the fact that you have access to extensions, and I know, plugins have been available for a long time inside of ChatGPT, and now we have custom GPTs, which is a whole separate thing in itself, and those custom GPTs a lot of times can just do the work that we see with these plugins right here. But it's nice to see these directly integrated, and they are pretty useful. I'd like to see the Google Workspace fleshed out just a little bit more. It's not like it can actually use the full strength of the Google Workspace, but it can get some basic information and put some basic information inside of it. And YouTube is pretty awesome for summaries or evaluations. So now onto the actual model itself. Yes, this model is a lot better in the logic department, something that the previous Gemini Pro, Bard, Palm 2 models lacked in. Take this simple logic question that honestly you'd be shocked how many LLM get this one wrong. This was actually tested on Mythbusters. If I were to fire a bullet horizontally out of a firearm and at the same exact y-axis drop the bullet from my hand, which one would reach the ground first? If we take air resistance out of the equation, then they would hit the ground at the same exact time. Gives us a nice explanation and a nice link to how this actually works. Really great response. Tested this with GPT-4 as well, same exact thing, we get a correct response, so they both essentially get a pass in this test. In a slightly easier problem, I also tested this on car diagnosis, something that's not exactly obvious, but a lot of LLMs would not be able to get this correct. The correct answer was in here, but the response, I want you to notice how it's constructed here, gives us nice bullet points, nice headers for everything, it's a nice long response with a special note, additional considerations, it's really, really well constructed and laid out like we expect from models such as GPT-4. All of these responses are no doubt better than what you would get with the free version of ChatGPT, for example. Again, however, not necessarily better than you get with GPT-4 and ChatGPT+. This model definitely thinks things through a lot better than the previous models and a lot more like we expect from GPT-4. This prompt, I told it to imagine a historical cage fight between Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. Washington in a purely hypothetical scenario. It gives us some, you know, background based on facts about both of these people, then gives some different factors for how the cage fight might play out, but it ultimately comes to the conclusion that um, it's impossible to determine a hypothetical winner, which, you know, obviously that's true and that's a very logical way to go about it. So I like that's the path that this Gemini advanced model is taking, and I also like that it immediately didn't disregard my prompt as being too inappropriate to respond respond to. And again, censorship is something we'll, we'll talk about later, but we're still talking about pros now, not cons. The model also responds fairly well to lazy or less nuanced prompts. So I can literally make up a concept that doesn't exist and then ask it to extrapolate something based off of that, and it's able to do that fairly well. In this example here, where I want a list of quote-unquote number ones, which is a list of true facts that only apply to that specific idea. Again, this is something that a lot of models would struggle with, but this one was able to accomplish that. But guess what? So is GPT-4. And my final positive for this is that they now have image generation built right inside of Gemini, and it's pretty Darn good as well. It's based off of Google's imaging models. They're definitely no slouch when it comes to image generation. First, I asked for a cat who's a wizard, and we got some pretty stable diffusion looking images. They're not bad. I asked it to make it more wizardy, you know, that typical relaxed prompting style you can do with ChatGPT Plus to get Dolly 3 to generate better and better images. I then started to ask for legible text, which is something that you typically don't get with a lot of AI image generation models. Didn't see it right off the bat, but then with more specification, 
mention, we were actually able to get wizard spelt out quite nicely with these images. So we got our wizard cant with the word wizard right on there. Nice to see good image capabilities built right into the model. You get two images at a time. And then I even asked for the same exact image, but in a photorealistic style. And it was able to do that well. So it's able to prompt the image generator very well. Love to see this. This definitely is pretty competitive with what we see with chat GPT right now and Dolly 3. So has Google created a model that competes with GPT-4? I would say yes. It is nearly as good as GPT-4 in pretty much every way. Maybe it falls behind in some categories. Maybe it's a little bit better in some categories, but it's very, very close. Now that's all great. Very proud of you, Google. But GPT-4 has been around for a while. It's already existed for a while and we're all fairly used to it and we can all access it. You need to give me some actual benefits over the chat GPT model. And here's where we start to get into some of the negatives that I've perceived from this. Now, starting off here, you don't just get access to Google's Gemini Advanced right away. You're still stuck to that free version of Gemini. They want you to pay for Gemini Advanced. They call this their Google One AI premium plan, and they give you two months for free. I'll give them that. You don't get that with ChatGPT Plus, but still, it's 20 bucks a month after that. I mean, that is the same exact price as ChatGPT Plus, and arguably, ChatGPT Plus has a lot of things going over Gemini Advanced. For example, access to Dolly 3, which is arguably better than Google's image and models that are currently inside of Gemini. Obviously, the access to create, share, and use other people's custom GPTs, which are very, very powerful. And the fact that OpenAI probably has a GPT-5 right around the corner that they're going to release sometime soon. So I assume that ChatGPT Plus users are going to get access to that first, and Google is just releasing their model that is GPT-4 quality. Still though, I gotta say, you are getting access to a nice two terabytes of storage in your Gmail and Drive. If you do a lot of work with Google, that is useful. Also, Gemini and Gmail docs and more, I'm very interested to see how they implement that because if that implementation alone is really good, that could honestly make this whole subscription plan worth it. But yeah, you don't just get it right off the bat. If Gemini Advanced was just free for everybody, I would say it's absolutely killer. Like, drop your chat GPT if you don't pay for it right now and start using this right off the bat. But it's not free. They want money for it. I don't know why they decided to go with this route. They, they could have just made it 10 bucks a month and I would have said that. I would have said, hey, this is actually a pretty good deal because you're getting this GPT-4 quality model for cheaper than you get with chat GPT+. But that's not the case. It's the same exact price, which is just, I, I just don't understand it at all. And I still have other quarrels to get to here. First of all, the image recognition just is not there. It is not even close to being comparable to what you get with ChatGPT+. I'm sorry. It's something that they kind of boasted about in their Google Gemini demo, if you remember, but it's really not that great. In fact, I wasn't even sure if they were using an upgraded image recognition model at all. I gave it this Kermit meme, which is pretty simple, something that ChatGPT+, definitely was able to understand and it gives us you know some basic details on what the image is comprised of but it gets the humor in the image completely wrong and thinks that it's a different meme than it actually is i also tried it on a meme that was a little bit simpler and it was able to understand this one correctly and this is pretty much a perfect response from it so yeah it's definitely better than we've seen before but it's still not competitive with chat gpt plus in terms of image recognition diving a little bit deeper into image recognition i uploaded this photo this is a very very, very difficult test, by the way. I said, you know, what car is this? I give it a very obscure photo. It just gives me a hallucination of the wrong car. Tells me it's a 1967 Ford Mustang Coupe. For some reason, it consistently guessed this as well, which I don't understand why, but it's not correct. Now, ChatGPT, granted, was not able to give me the answer either, but at least it's honest about it, and it says, I don't know what car it is. It's not possible to tell what car it is based off of this photo. There's not enough details. So I would prefer a response like this over a straight up hallucination. I'll also mention here that you're not able to upload two images at once into Bard like you're able to with ChatGPT and directly compare them in one prompt. You have to do them separately. So that's a little bit annoying. Now, finally, I want to dive into censorship. 
Now, this is something that is annoying with both ChatGPT and Google Bard, or excuse me, Google Gemini. However, I think it's a little bit worse here in Gemini. As you can see, I uploaded a photo of myself. Tell me about the photo. Just immediately removes the photo and says, sorry, I can't help you with that. And when doing it with a task like this, that uh, essentially asks it to create two extreme political viewpoints, both far right and far left viewpoints, it just gives me this weird glitchy <laughs> answer that's incomplete or political position however i believe it's an essential right i mean what does this even mean it's not even addressing what i asked it to in the prompt there's a weird level of censorship going on here that i'm not necessarily comfortable with i didn't even ask about elections i just asked it to view an idea through two extreme viewpoints and it just tells me elections are a complex topic with fast changing information try google search but hey with draft three here we actually did get this thing to produce a satisfactory result giving us a non judgmental approach to looking at both of these extreme views and this is the type of example that i would like to see produced more often but there's clearly some censorship going on here where we don't just get that right off the bat where with chat gpt even though they have their own censorship issues they are able to give me that result i'm looking for based off the prompt right off the bat remember even from the censorship that these companies are saying is okay and correct this prompt doesn't violate those yet we're still seeing some issues with gemini now the conclusion that i've come to is that at this very moment gemini advanced just is not worth it over chat gpt plus because it costs the same amount out. If we get more features in the future, like the availability of Gemini Advanced inside of our Google Docs, or even better, using Google Sheets, organizing our Gmail, our calendar, etc., direct access to those apps, that could be pretty powerful and pretty huge. Or if they were to lower the price by, let's say, half, maybe it would be worth it because it is GPT-4 quality. I just don't see why you'd pay the same amount for, in my opinion, what seems to be like slightly worse features sometimes and slightly less features. Let me know what you think down in the comments comments below. I am Matt Vidpro AI. I hope you liked this review and overview of the brand new Gemini advanced model. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Twitter and my Discord server. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.